All right. Well, welcome everyone to Byte Ventures, where we venture into the engineering marvel in the field of technology. So the case study today we are discussing is Zomato Search Case Study Part One, where we'll demystify the engineering marvel behind how Zomato handles 100 million searches every single day. But wait, what is Zomato first? So Zomato is a restaurant aggregator and a food delivery service based out of India. Then why do we need a search for a website like Zomato? Very interesting. So there are a couple of use cases for which we would need the search first. When someone is searching for food, he or she might search for restaurants and reviews to like which restaurant they should go to or deliver food from. In the other cases, they might be searching for some interesting cuisines like pizza or pasta, which place delivers the delicious pizza based on the reviews and all stuff. They might decide to group the restaurants on the reviews like, okay, this might be a better option considering my taste palette. And obviously based on ratings, based on price points and other stuff, people might be searching for different sort of things. So let's discuss about the architecture, what uh, was present right from the beginning. So the Somato used something called as Apache Solar. It's called Solar. Um, so what exactly is Solar? So Apache Solar is an open source search platform built on Apache Lucene. So Lucene is very popular. Um, it's a search library written in Java and it's robust. It's highly scalable, very reliable, and it has its very definite use cases across many technological companies. It has a nice community, which provides solution to a lot of bugs and errors in case it faced. The second reason for Zomato using Apache Solar is because of its REST-like API, where we put the document uh, via anything like JSON, CSV, or XML, and then query it using a HTTP GET request. And obviously receive those requests uh, over JSON or XML or CSV, or whatever it is. Some other additional out of the box features that makes it very enticing is its full search, the highly scalable, it can be scaled to multiple horizontal servers that we have. Very, very near real time indexing. The geospatial indexing that is present is a very interesting use case as well. Also, uh, not the only thing that we have is the custom tokenizers and parsers that can be very effective in fine tuning the application use cases. Okay, let's get to the initial configurations. As usual, Zomato started with a single node server as anyone would if they're starting a new company, right? So the initial single node solar cluster was working well until they requested some more higher traffic. So when the traffic grew, the solar cluster required much higher compute and the compute was getting pretty expensive. And that's where they faced a lot of out of memory exceptions for the first time. And that's when they thought like, okay, let's increase the cluster sizes. But that's not economical, right? Because once you increase the cluster size, it's not always efficient. And it costs a lot of money in that case as well. So they thought of to improve it the second type of configuration which is called a master slave architecture pretty common use case uh, wherein there is a master which is used for a specific purpose there are a couple of slave servers or we call it replicating servers that sync with the master and they serve different kind of traffic so in this case the master was responsible for write uh, which is basically the indexing and in the slave the slave servers were responsible for the read queries or the queries that are coming for especially the searches right so something like uh, there is a master here we have and there is a bunch of uh, sleep servers we're not going into details of how they're going into sync but let's assume that we already know that uh, how they're remaining in sync this is the master and this is the sleep and obviously there are multiple slaves because we are more so we'll have it behind a load balancer Suppose this is a load balancer and it proxies the request to the particular slave machines as per the availability. So the write request comes to this and the read request comes to the load balancer and it goes through the proxy to the right slave machines that we have and they turn in sync. Okay. 
everything looks good, right? What exactly is the problem then? So when they went to master slave architecture, uh, they thought that the out of memory exceptions would reduce by then because they efficiently managed to divert the traffic into two different categories. And that would eventually solve the problem of OOMs or out of memory exceptions. But actually it didn't. They were still seeing a lot of out of memory exception, even with a constant traffic. That was very, very much a strange thing. And that's when the engineering team at Zomato delved into the code base, the dashboards and other stuff to figure out what exactly is happening with the JVM. They realized a couple of very unique problems in this case. The first problem we have is the field cache. What exactly is field cache? Let's see it. The field cache is a part of Apache Solar where uh, it maintains a kind of inverted index data structure to cache the field that we are trying to index it, right? Because uh, suppose a search query is fired, we cannot go through all documents in the secondary memory and fetch it and then search across them. It'll take a humongous amount of time. So what exactly it was doing was to avoid loading the files from the disk, it used to cache them in a data structure, obviously an inverted index data structure, right? Because that's how it will be efficient to search it. So let's say we have a doc, a uh, couple of documents. So we have, let's say three documents. We have like X, uh, Y, and Z. In X, A is a word, B is a word, and C is a word, and one represents the count or something, right? So the word A in document X present single, single time, uh, the word B present in document X two times, and C present three times. Similarly, A present two times in document Y, B present three times in document Y, and so on. So this is the doc level information. So what exactly field cache did? So field cache converted something to this structure wherein we have the word A, and it represents, okay, in document X, we have it present once, in document Y, present twice, and document Z, present four times, and all stuff. This is pretty effective because it helps to search, because if someone is searching for A, they can directly say, that, okay, document X, Y, and Z have it, so I should return all of these three documents in the part of the response. So that's how it processed. Okay, well, it works, right? So what exactly is the problem then? The actual problem is that, Zomato was using uh, Apache Solar's version less than seven. So with the version less than seven, the field cache was enabled by default for all index fields. So for example, if you have to declare a field uh, to be indexed, field cache was enabled by default on that. And the major thing is there was no configurations at all to limit its maximum size or count. Because obviously cache will take memory, right? So if there is no configurations to limit it, then it will blow up. And that was the exact problem. It led to very heavy memory footprint and led to filling up the heap space. The garbage collection couldn't work very efficiently and it led to OOMs or out of memory exceptions again. That's part one. What is another problem that they discovered? The other problem is, we just call something as the dynamic field. What exactly is a dynamic field? The dynamic field is also a construct uh, based in Apache Solar, right? So it is a construct that effectively allows you to manage or search a lot of the fields, but not adding them uh, into the schema, right? For example, we have ATTTR underscore this. So suppose this is a type of thing that we did and we have defined it like ATTR underscore this and is a type of string and we have indexed it true and stored true. So with this kind of definition, any field with ATTR at the beginning and underscore like ATTR one, two, till 99 will be indexed and we don't need to declare explicitly in our schema. It gives a huge advantage. Why? Because for example, you have a use case wherein you have a ton of fields uh, with a fixed string in between and probably a prefix or a suffix which is not the same then you can use this dynamic field to control it but you might have guessed it right the main problem with this is there is no way we can control it because this happens at the runtime and the solar takes care of everything that is the huge problem here because this happening at the runtime exploded beyond controls and this led to the second use case of very high memory footprint and it led 
to out of memory exceptions again. Pretty bad. Okay. So we discussed the first thing is the field caching. The cache size was getting increased. So let's think about the solution a little bit. Okay. So here we are thinking about solution as how do we reduce the size of the cache? So as we discussed in the first case, not the second problem, uh, there was this master server. Uh, there was this bunch of slaves uh, which are behind this load balancer, right? And they were getting synced from here at time. And these read queries were getting routed to this slave machines, right? So where would you think the heap memory was getting exceeded? Would it be this here or this here? Probably both because get getting synced. But the very interesting thing is for this place because this is serving the the search or the read request that we have from the from the client, right? So if somehow we reduced uh, the heap size getting bloated up, then probably we would reduce the out of memory exceptions that we were facing earlier, right? That's exactly what Zomato did in their solution one. So they indexed something as a mock document, okay? So they indexed a mock document at regular intervals. And what did they do? So this regular interval that we're talking of is a time which is lesser than the sync time of the slave and the masters, okay? So what exactly it did, it tried to rewrite the whole cache at regular intervals. For example, let's say the size of the cache at the slave or the master is, let's say, 1,000 thousand unit right and each time to fill this whole thousand unit cache uh, it took uh, sorry thousand unit heap storage which eventually the cache uses took like probably 10 minutes let's say okay I'm thinking about unit not gigabytes or megabytes or something because let's give it general so we would consider a random uniform distribution and assume that every minute there is some kind of request it's not re reaching thousand units in like two minutes or something it, let's say for an average it takes 10 minutes in some cases it would be lesser or more but on an average it's 10 minutes okay so what if we purged this cache at five minutes right so let's say at five minutes some process came and it cleared up the cache again so we would never reach this stage where we are reaching hundred uh, one thousand unit and that would lead to ooms right so what it effectively meant was if at time where the heap storage is not filled, if you're trying to purge the cache, then a problem is solved. And that's what exactly this mock document did. This mock document wrote this here. And when the slaves tried to sync, so this is, let's say, master. Okay. Uh, let's complete it. Um, so we have this document coming here. Then it is getting synced to slave. And every five minutes, let's say this is five minutes and the cache filling time is let's say 10 minutes okay so this five minutes uh, this master is getting synced to the slave here and the slaves cast is getting purged every five minutes and that solved the OOM but you see there's another problem that is introduced so what if there is a request that comes in so this is the load balancer we have here so suppose there's a request coming in and it requested for exact same information that we just purged last minute. What would happen? The cache warming would happen, right? That means those things would need to be cached again. The field cache need to be rebuilt and then only the search will be powered. You see, this will take a lot more time and has throttled the whole system because now that this is bottlenecked, uh, the response time takes a hit. We'd not be able to do a lot of things by then. That was a huge problem. So, Somato needs to think of something which is better. And that's how the second solution is using doc values. So what exactly is doc values, right? The so doc values is pretty similar to field cache, which is like, it's kind of a cache, which is used to make the search aggregations or any kind of operations faster by bringing things into the memory at the right time. But how exactly is different and how did it solve the memory footprint, the huge memory footprint that are created by the field cache? Let's see it. The first point, the field cache and the dog values, what are the differences? Here we go. 
So the field values are stored in memories as arrays in the field cache, which consumed a lot of memory. So that's why it was taking a very heavy footprint. Whereas in doc values, it kind of got a columnar data structure where storing field in a very compact structure that would reduce the time or the space rather uh, that it took for storing the whole data. Furthermore, it uses various encoding techniques. Uh, we're not going into details, uh, probably we'll go in a later video, uh, but uh, various numeric encoding techniques are used to represent the values in a more compact form, right? The compact would lead to very less memory footprint. And that's why, uh, that's the first reason that how we got away with the out of memory errors or ohms, right? Secondly, field cache was doing eager load on to the memory for every single field. That is a huge thing because sometimes it would happen that we are not requesting such uh, a surge on a certain kind of criteria and the field cache would have taken into the memory, which is kind of a waste, right? The doc values is very efficient in that. So it kind of lazy loads the field on demand, uh, which are required for the operations like sorting or facetting or any stuff like that. So this led to very efficient memory consumption as well. Third, and the most important thing, is the JVM heap. So field caches uses JVM heap to store the field values. What exactly is JVM heap? So when we're talking about a Java program, because the main infrastructure is uh, the main code base is in Java. So, and this solar is also powered. It's also a Java library built on the top of Java library, which is Apache Lucent. So it kind of used JVM internally to some extent, right? So the field cache uh, used the JVM heap memory. So whenever we run a program, uh, it creates a whole program layout and it takes out certain parts of the main memory into JVM's memory. And whenever we allocate uh, new resources, it consumes from that memory, which, which we set at minus XMS, minus XMX and all stuff. To set what is the maximum heap size and all we are taking into consideration, right? So the field cache was taking the JVM heap memory to store these field values. So if the gas size exceeded, obviously we would lead or we would see the other the ohms in this case. But doc values very intelligently leveraged memory mapped files. So in this case, the memory mapped files uh, use the virtual memory of the process. Uh, so, and this is managed by OS, which is much more efficient, much more effective. And that led to reducing the footprint to a lot lesser extent in this time. So we saw how those two problems um, or ideally a single problem of out of memory exceptions were handled uh, using very interesting doc values thing. I think uh, from Apache Solar 7 onwards, um, uh, doc values is something which is getting defaulted instead of field cache and they're solving it. So that's all. That's all for this video, guys. And I hope uh, you liked the video. Uh, in the second part of the video, we'll come across how Zomato scaled the doc values and the dynamic field, especially uh, how they took care of having the dynamic field not blowing up. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you and have a nice day. See you in the next one.